everyone. This is Amy Hart and welcome to the Amy Hart Show. How's everybody doing out there? All right, where are we? We are in the last week. Are we in the last week of June? And um, things are opening up everywhere, at least here in New York City. I think we're in phase two going into phase three. And um, we're hoping for the best. I know that everybody's been keeping their eye on the news and we've seen some numbers go up in a, quite a few places. And um, Florida and Tennessee and a couple other places. So I think, I think the message here is enjoy your summer. We have to live our lives. We've got to get the economy going again. We have to be with our family and our friends, but we have to be safe. It's not over yet, guys. We are still in the first phase of this wave. Everyone keeps talking about the second wave. We're still in the middle of the hurricane. So I think if everyone can just live their life and enjoy, but be safe, that's all. And be compassionate and considerate to other people around you. And I think that's the most important message here. So uh, hang in there. We're going to get through the summer. And um, I, I've talked to a lot of my friends in the sports world. And it seems like everybody's full speed ahead um, with NFL, NHL, MLB, I'm not sure about. But we're going to see what happens. And I can't wait to get back into some fall sports. It's going to be great. All right, guys. So my past few podcasts have been pretty serious. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in this world. We've talked politics. We've talked racism. We've talked COVID crisis. And all good stuff, all important stuff. But today I wanted to do something a little bit lighter. So I'm super excited to have Seth Herzog on. And if you don't know him, he's one of the funniest guys. He's amazing. He's an American comedian. Um, he's active in New York City performing comedy. So he does stand-ups. Um, he's done, he's been on tons of TV series and shows. Um, most importantly, in the, where I've actually seen him live is on the late um, night show with Conan O'Brien and late night with Jimmy Fallon. And he's hysterical. <laughs> he's the best. You have to, you have to Google him too. Like um, with some of his YouTubes that he does just make you laugh. So we're going to bring him on and talk a little bit about what he's been doing during these past couple months, what's happening with the Fallon show and um, just what's happening in life. So something a little light to brighten everyone's mood this week. And I'm really happy to have him on. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Okay. Seth. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm feeling hot. It's hot today. It's like 90, 90 degrees. It is very hot. Where I'm, are you right now? I'm in Manhattan. Ah, the I'm city. In the How yeah, I'm in the city. Uh, I'm in the Hamptons and it's, it's way hot. It's nice though. It's yeah. a beautiful day. I'm sure. Awesome. I'm sure it's great. Yeah. How, what's going on in the city right now? I honestly haven't been back there for like a good two months. So tell us what's happening. <laughs> well, it was, um, it was really dark and dreary for a while. I mean, not, I mean, through May, through March and April and May, I mean, just like less people were around. It felt the yeah. empty in a kind of an, an almost nice way, but sort of uh, dark foreboding way. Um, less people around, like no one's out, no one's on the street. Um, what else? You know, I didn't really leave my house too much either. Like no one was yeah. leaving the house. Like I went to the store, I went to pick up food and I went to the pharmacy and that kind of thing. And then when the weather really got nice, like towards mid May, people started going to the park, like yeah. Central Park and it's pa packed. I mean, people really want to get out of their house, you know? Oh, so the, yeah. park, the park has been really packed. Shocking. Yeah. So, but I mean, is it starting, I mean, it's opening up a little bit now, like the stores are opening up. It's a little bit more, feels like New York a little bit more or not really still. Um, well, today was the first day of phase two. So we'll see. Yeah. Today's the first day of like eating outside and you can go get a haircut and you can shop in stores and there's office, people are going back to their offices. Wow. What, what a crazy couple months, right? It's been really <laughs> insane. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's really, been a wild, it's really been a wild ride to sort of watch it all from your house. I know. <laughs> I know. What, what do you think? Do you think that uh, New York's going to come back? Usually does after crisis. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. There's no way it's not. I mean, like, you know, uh, I forgot who said it, but the obituary of New York has been written a hundred, a hundred times. I know. It's interesting because I have some friends that are like, we're never going back. So they packed up. They're moving to Miami. I'm like, don't you think you guys are just like jumping the gun here? Like, let's give it through the summer. You're going to leave New York? What? First of all, <laughs> they don't watch 
the news because Miami, they are spiking. They had, they had, they have 3,000 new cases a day there now. Yeah, I know. I mean, Miami is real trouble. But if you think about it, if we look back in the earlier days, I mean, they never really completely shut down. I mean, there were kids on the beach, spring breakers. It, oh, like, yeah. they never really did it. So they, they were- never did it. That's true. It doesn't surprise me. Really. No, no, they, they never cared. They didn't, they didn't yeah. want to shut down. Like, outdoor life in Miami is, is everything. Yeah. There is no indo- indoor, indoor life. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, look what's happening now. So what, what do you think? You think this is going to... I think we've done it right now. I mean, we've stayed on the down low for a while. Mm-hmm. But do you think this is going to happen again? What's your, your opinion on I mean, on it? my opinion is only what I read. Um, yeah. Every single uh, expert has said there's going to be a second wave in the next, yeah. you know, by November. October, November, maybe. So who knows? So we may have to all go home again. We may all be out of our houses by August, September. And yeah. then by the end of October, it may um, hit the city again hard. But who knows? It might, it might not. I mean, it's also it the speculation. No one, really, no one really knows. It depends what, what sports station you're or what you know, news station that you're watching, too, because, yeah. you know, they, everybody gives you their own point of views, especially when yeah. politics and everything else. So. Right. But, but, but which way problems. you're going. Yes. However, the, uh, the virus doesn't care about politics and doesn't know about it. No, you're right. So this is facts. <laughs> so is this either listen to like read what the facts are or what people's spin is to help their agenda? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But that's what I meant by politics. I feel like certain people, not saying any names, are right. using the whole coronavirus to benefit them. But like, what are we going to well, do? We can't well, change that. Yeah. I mean, no one's trying to ben- I mean, no one's using it to benefit themselves because everyone's losing. But uh, people are trying to like bet people to. I mean, I think Donald wants people to leave their house more so the economy can get going because he thinks it's going to help him win. That's really all he cares about. Is he's going to? He wants. Well, that's to- who I was referring to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because I mean. Really, for his rallies and things, I mean, he's in, what, what did he say the other night? He's encouraging people to come, and the doors are open. Come on out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mask, no mask, come out. Come yeah. join the fun. Yeah, yeah. So. And <laughs> 6,000 people did. Yeah. They showed I thought up. that was kind of funny, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only 6,000. Only 6,000. I don't know if you're a Trump supporter. I mean, we get into all this stuff, but I, you know, I think everybody was laughing a little bit about Of course that. they were. Of course they were. He was furious, apparently. You know? I mean, the whole <laughs> thing is an ego boost for him anyway. Just doing a rally is just to make him feel better about himself and his campaign. You know, because I guess he was feeling down. But anyway. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that he's feeling down. <laughs> I'm so hopefully some of us can support him. Same, I'm kind of, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I won't get into that too much. Yeah. But so, so, you know, being comedian and, and making things light and happy, mm-hmm. I mean, what did you do during these past couple of months to kind of keep, especially with your family and your, your friends and yourself? Well, like, I have, I have twins, you girls, oh, you know? Nice. Yeah. I'm going to take. How old are your girls? Uh, they are 19 months. Oh, how amazing. Yeah. That's fun. So I have, so I, so our nanny, you know, stayed home for 66 days. And my wife wow. was home. got a pretty thriving job at home. So yeah, she took care of the kids for 66 days. Wow. Well, that's, that's nice. So that's a different change of pace, right? Yes. <laughs> and I've been doing, I've been doing these um, twice a week Instagram live shows. Ah, you know, nice. Where yeah. I get on my Instagram Live, I interview other comedians and actors and famous friends, friends of mine, and we just get into it about all kinds of things. We get into it about, I mean, who knows? We joke about stories from our youth, and we talk about uh, politics, and we talk about where, who we were when we were younger, and how we got to where we are, and just all kinds of things. That's great. So uh, that's what I'm yeah. doing as well, and that's a lot of, a lot of time. And, and it's, but I was also going back to the twins. It's also nice because when you're so busy in your career and stuff, I mean, they grow up so fast. So you were able to spend like day after day quality time with them that True. you wouldn't have gotten back. We'll never have that time. We'll never have that kind of time again together. We'll never have like two months where we're together every day in our lives. 
It'll never ever. be, it'll never, we'll never have that again. I know. Kind of so new. there's blessings in it. What, so what happened with you? Like, did like, that week when everything sort of crashed down, did you guys stop the Fallon show? Did everyone just yeah, go home yeah, and that was yeah. it? Uh, yeah, I work over at the, you know, Tonight Show. And it was weird because it was the week, it was the week of like March 10th. And we were getting rumblings of like, we don't know what's going to happen. There's this disease. It's really hitting New York. And da, 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 da. Yeah. And so we were like, well, we're going to continue to do shows, but just without an audience. Right? right? So we did that once. We did one show without an audience. And then everyone's like, we're all going, we're all going home. Everyone's going home. <laughs> going to do shows, going to do shows at his house, and that's it. So then we've been yeah. doing that ever since. So there's only one show we did without a crowd in the studio. And then everyone's been home since March 14th, basically. You know? Yeah. And I don't know when we're going to go back. I think they're hoping to get back in the studio in September, but uh, it's all based on, you know, with science and what's going on in the city and, the infection rates are up. But the funny thing about our show is, even though, let's say everyone in the city is still at 1% where we are now, but the people coming to the show are all from all over the place. You know, everyone's yeah, from, that's the thing. from Florida or Europe or wherever, every other state, Texas. So <laughs> that's what's dangerous about the show is that like everyone is from everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. And I, I feel like I've been in the audience before, actually, when you kind of opened up and it was great, um, but it's it's about the audience. It's about the vibe. It's about having all the people around. I mean, I love totally. that. That's yeah. Totally. That's so. part of the vibe. I mean, that's what the shows from home lack. I mean, they have their own charm. They have their own kind of homemade fun charm, and everyone's families and kids are involved and such. But you need that vibe, that laugh, that that energy. Like, really changes everything. You know. It does. So we're hoping. But well, who knows? You know, everyone. I was yeah. hoping for the best and we're trying to get in there. But I think we're, we'd be like the last thing to happen, you know? Besides sports. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, I don't know. Sports be after us, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> sports are going to happen it's so without, without a crowd. Like baseball's going to no. happen. Basketball's going to happen. I know? think. I think um, my, my um, husband and I used to own some minor league teams. And um, they're, you know, MLB's going back and forth with these contracts. And like, should they start? Shouldn't they start? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would love for them to start because I'm a sports girl and I want to go to some games, but I understand. I mean, you can't fill the stadium. Are the, the, the minor leagues happening or not? No, the minor league, ha they're not happening this year. It, it's a complete wash. Um, yeah, but, it, but MLB, if you read the, you know, you read the news, they're always going back and forth with contracts. They want 60 games. They want, they're having a hard time agreeing. And, right. you know, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. It's the same thing. It's the, it's the crowd. It's the, the, you yeah. know, the excitement was what's about the sports when you're there anyway. So yeah. we'll see. Are they going to um, do it in the actual stadiums if they do it? I, you know, I've heard different things. I've, I've heard some of my friends, you know, in the NFL and stuff that um, they're, they're going to start regular season, but they're going to have a lottery. Okay. Um, so there's only like going to be like 10 or 15% of people allowed in the building. I don't know how they're going to figure that out. I probably people that have the suites or are going to pay the most for the tickets and they're going to be like <laughs> outrageous prices for the tickets. So we'll see. But yeah, I know it's craziness. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. um, so you've had an amazing career. Um, yeah. I, you're so funny. <laughs> I have to tell you. That's just a fact. Let's just get out of that real. That's, that's not, that's not an, uh, an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're funny. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so you make me laugh. So that's all that matters right now. But um, <laughs> how difficult was it for you to be in the New York, like the comedy scene? Because I mean, you do a lot of stand ups and stuff. For me, I yeah, think that would be really difficult. I do a lot of stand up. And it's, you know, New York is really competitive. There's a lot yeah. of comics. But there's also a lot of opportunity to perform. Like New York has more shows and opportunities to get out there to perform in any other town. Like yeah. tons and tons and tons of little shows and open mics and, and little book shows everywhere. Um, so if you're looking to someone who just wants to get up and perform and like really do this as a career and like really perform every night, yeah, you, can, you should come. I mean, back yeah. when, I mean, not right now, but when audiences appear again, when people can go out to shows, this is the place to be. 
I mean, this is the place to perform three, four sets a night, every night if you want to, every single night, you know? I mean, so it's, it's, it's difficult in the sense that you have to really be diligent and you have to stick at it and you have to really work for years. That's yes. the thing that people understand is that like, it is many years of us going out there and performing or trying to perform or trying to get on shows or like writing and, did, and meeting people. The meeting people and getting in and getting to be friends with people mm -hmm. or then going to, you'd be working with later is very important. And that all oh. happens at the entry the level. The relationships, absolutely. The relationships all happens at the entry, the entry, entry level. Um, anyway, so it's, so it's, it's hard, but you have to, but the, the thing is you, the, the goal, if you're going to get into stand up, the goal has to be, I just want to get good at this one little thing. And the, and that's the end in and of itself. There's no other yeah. end. There's no end. The end is I just want to be good at this art. And then yeah. if I'm doing it in basements all over town and that's it, that's fine. I'm just good at that. That's because that's, that's the only way that's going to sustain you because that's all you're going to be doing for years and years. You just got, you're just good at that one thing and that's great. And then you can, and then when other things start happening for you, then that's extra and you can start working on that, but you can't be thinking about it from the beginning or else you'll drive yourself nuts. What was the crowd like in New York? I mean, when you first started, I mean, till, till now, are they a tough crowd? I mean, they're tough um, people. It depends on the show. Every show's yeah. different. Every yeah. audience is different. I mean, were some of the tough crowds? Sure. Do I still get tough crowds? Sure, all the time, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's shocking how wildly different New York audiences are, depending yeah. on what show you're at and what neighborhood and who's organizing it, who's producing it, and who's putting the show together, you know? Like a, a, an apartment show in Brooklyn somewhere where it's like just promoted by one guy and it's everyone on his list is uh -huh. very different than like, you know, a tourist show in Times Square, which is also very different than like a show way out in Queens at a club or something. Mm -hmm. And it's all different. Yeah. Even the Upper West, even the clubs vary. Like the clubs in the Upper West Side are different than the clubs in the West Village. They're different than the clubs in, in Midtown. The audiences are all slightly different, you know? Well, I can see that way. That'd be a good place to start out. You get a lot of experience and you're, you're dealing with a lot of different people and personalities and- Sure. You know, Sure, yeah. but, but, but I don't know. The, play, the thing is you want to be in a place where you can hone your voice. I think what, what people run into is the problem with the clubs is that you end up forging your voice around making tourists laugh. And that's a very particular thing. Yeah. And then you end up just becoming a comic who can do that, who can make tourists laugh. But you don't necessarily always have like an original voice. You want to do your best to try and like, foster and create that original voice that's your thing that makes that's funny that only you can do and sometimes that's better with more of like locals you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah definitely people from New York. anyway so there's a lot of theories about that what's it like to warm up the crowd for jimmy fallon it's gotta, gotta be fun it's right fun. i miss it every day i mean you saw how much fun i was i was yeah. seemingly happy yeah, I was so fun. I love it, I it. <laughs> seemingly <laughs> having <laughs> Well, it's a, I mean, it's a job. I mean, I've been doing it for 11 years, you know? And, and a job is a job. Um, you, did you move um, your microphone? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did, I did, I did. It's better now, it's better now. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, it was, um, you know, it's a job is a job, but at the same time, like, it's easily the most consistently fun job I've ever had. And even though I've been doing it for 11 years, like, I still look forward to it every day. Every day, I, I, right now, I miss it. I look forward to showing up and getting in front of that crowd. And, you know, it's, it's a fun crowd. I'm very lucky that we're at a show that's a fun crowd. Like, I know, I know some other friends who do warm up at other shows that are, like, 10 in the morning. And, you know, they're not as excited to be there. And maybe they're all a little older. You know, I, we have, like, in a very eclectic age group. Like, some people are very young. Some people are older. They're from all over the place. But everyone is super psyched to be there. You know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for very, sure. Very, I'm very lucky in that, in that mm. sense. What are the key things like you focus on in the crowd? I mean, like, do you have like a plan or you just kind of get up there and improv? My plan is, I mean, I only have a very short time. I mean, 
I do about five minutes of cough. I bring out the roots. The roots and I do a song together. And then I have varying degrees of time after that. After that, I usually have like five to 10 minutes. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have longer. Sometimes I have less. I never know what it's, what it's going to be. So um, my plan is just to get people as excited and in that groove where like the audience is thinking as a unit you know yeah. like thinking as a unit they're laughing as a unit they're feeling like one one cohesive group and they're excited and they're and they're in it as fast as i can so how do you do that as fast as you can because i never know how much time i have you know yeah so that's the that's the plan and there's like the you know the easiest ways to do that is after the song i just do crowd work as you saw you know i come out i talk to the audience I try and be as like genuinely funny uh, and in spontaneous and real as I can. Cause I notice when you're, when you're genuinely spontaneous rather than doing like a somewhat rote performance, the audience, okay. especially when they're feeling like they're in on a moment that's special, it's happening once, they will laugh harder. Audiences will laugh harder when they're in on something spontaneous. So you get to that place, you get to that spontaneous place where you're off book, you're off the script and you're gonna be funny and then all of a sudden they're at like four, they're from four, so they're air at eight, you know? All of a sudden we're at eight. And hopefully we'll keep it there as long as we can. Give us one of your jokes that works well. I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, so long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> there's a lot of college students from all over the world at the, yeah. sh at the show. And let's say someone's from like Australia, a lot of Australians, every day, there's Australians, every, every, huh. every day. So I do a whole thing with the Australians. They'll be from college and I'll say, so where do you go to school? You go to uh, Australia University, which for some reason gets a giant laugh. Whatever country they're from, I'll be like, do you go to Portugal University? Which is such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> it's so stupid. But they think it's funny, right? <laughs> it gets a giant laugh every single time. And then with the Australians, oh, I do a whole thing about, you know how time-wise when they get here, they always land before they left. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Back in time. Good. Something here, you go back and back and back in time. So I say to them as if I don't know the answer. I'll say, wait, when you landed here, and I'll think for a second, did you land before you left? And then they think <laughs> about it. They go, oh, yeah, we did. I said, did you call yourself back at home when you got here? And I'm like, <laughs> it's me. Yeah, pack an extra jumper in the luxury do. Or whatever you can say to yourself. And then I go into the like the like, the language because they because in Australia everything's very cutified and shortened. Every, right. Everything is like you have a cute nickname for everything. Like your sunglasses are your sunnies and an avocado is an avo. <laughs> University is I'm going to uni for four yearie woos. So I do a whole bit about the language and how it's like a bunch of six year olds. You know, the whole country is a bunch of six year olds making up cute words. And um, and then I ask Love them what it. their job is. Yeah, I ask them what their job is and what the what the cute nickname for their job is. And there's always a cute nickname for whatever their stupid job is. You know, <laughs> like uh, electricians <laughs> are called Spockies. <laughs> so that, that's that's something that all right, I get it. Feels get it. might feel like I you know it's happening spontaneously, but that particular part is planned in the sense that there's Australians every day. Kind of like the Ibiza thing, Ibiza. <laughs> Ibiza, Ibiza, yeah. yeah. Everything has a little bit of a lift. <laughs> Once you construct the language for them, they then they start laughing because they don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah, so I know. Talking, they're like, oh yeah, I guess we do nickname everything. Like I never, they don't even think about it. It's just so normal. <laughs> I know, I know. So do you like work directly with Jimmy to put the material together or is it, <laughs> is it your thing? He has no idea. He, what, no he idea. doesn't even, we, we've never met. Um, <laughs> you haven't talked about He, he and I are old friends, and he, he made me do this. But um, <laughs> we, no, I wrote my, my bit that I do, I wrote myself. I just figured it nice. out. Like the first, cool. those five minutes I do at the top of the show are five minutes I wrote that are all like about the rules and what we're going to see and what, what's going to happen. And here's some jokes about sort of the house rules and stuff like that, you know. So it's a little like it's an intro five minutes sort of introducing everyone to the show and what's going to happen. And I have jokes built in. And those jokes, I know, get a certain level of laughs. And when they're not there, by the end of the five minutes, I'm like, okay, we're in trouble. Or we're not yeah. in trouble. 
or the, right, right. I can see where the temperature of the audience is depending on how they're doing um, with that, that first five, five. So essentially, you're just Jimmy's fluffer. <laughs> I say that all the, all the time. People ask me, <laughs> some, I, do, I do a Q&A at the end of the show with them. Right. People are leaving slowly. We spill them very slowly out of the audience. So I do a little Q&A, and I they always ask, what's your job title? And I always say, fuck it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, so getting, there's one, a lot of things that you've done, but you toured with Iraq playing in front of the troops, and that's, that's amazing. They need to yes. laugh. Yes. Tell yes. me about we, that. We were supposed to go to Iraq. The thing is, we couldn't get in. So I stayed in Kuwait um, for 10, 10 days. It was actually quite, I mean, we could talk for hours just about this one experience, which was really, which was really wild. Yeah. I, got a, I mean, I don't know how far, far back you want to go. I got a phone call on April 1st in 2008. Okay. And it was a comedy producer who I barely know who called me up on April Fool's Day and was like, hey, do you want to go to Iraq and do a bunch of shows? And I thought for sure he was pranking me. For sure. Yeah. You know, the war was still kind of going, going on. And I, I didn't want to have him see me blink. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. I'll go to Iraq. Sure, why not? He goes, great, because someone just dropped out. We need someone for this tour. And then all of a sudden, someone from the government's calling me to get my like passport number and social security number. And they have to do a background check. And all I'm thinking is, they're going deep on this April Fool's wow. Day. Oh, <laughs> I still you think it's that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought it was an April Fool's Day prank. Okay. So what happened was, I, um, what happened? Oh, so I ended up just going because I was like, once I said yes and it was going forward and we were two weeks away from leaving, I couldn't back out of it, even though I thought it was a prank. So, and then someone else backed out. So it was me and one other dude. And the guy who was organizing it is this guy named Scott Kennedy, who's no longer with us, but he was a comic from LA who yeah. loved the group so much that he went to Afghanistan and Iraq and did tours there every month. He wow. would go for a week every incredible he would literally just go back and forth constantly constantly and every time he went every month he'd bring other comics with him right Obviously, so he I felt safe and yeah he felt i mean safe. i guess yeah. i mean he, they're pretty i mean they have we have a team of security with us right i you know, normally i guess they we would travel by helicopter from base to base and not go anywhere where there's anything major like dangerous going on but so we get to Kuwait, we do one Air Force show, and that goes very well. They have like a real theater, you know. And then we're supposed to get, go to Iraq, and there's a sandstorm. First of all, there's a sandstorm in, our, in, in Iraq, so no planes are going out. And then two right. days later, it, it hits, it hits um, Kuwait, where we are, and we're in a sandstorm for two days, where you can't even see outside. It's crazy. Wow, wow, wow. And I, yeah. and I had to eat. I had to walk to the mess hall and back and figure out, figure out my way. I had to like guess how to get there, you know, it's really wild. Mm -hmm. And so, so after four days of no planes being able to leave, um, our flights just got shuttled. I got, got sort of like um, canceled, you know, because everything, we're the least important thing. Like all these other things had to fly over there, like, you know, right. resources and, people and other stuff. So comedy was like the least important thing. So after five days of our flights getting canceled into our Iraq after the sandstorm was over, Scott Kennedy, who I was with, was like, let's just stay in Kuwait and do shows here. Let's just stay here. So we mm. did an, a Navy show, we did an Army show, and we just hung, hung out on base and just talked That's to great. people. It was, yeah. really, it, was really, it was a real education on how the war is being fought. Where you just sit on base and talk to people. You just talk to them about it. Were they just so open about everything and just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very open about their experiences. Everyone has a different experience. How people got there is interesting. I mean, I will say this. What I learned about our army is that even though they're from every part of the country and every town, every walk of, walk of life, almost everyone's experience was um, this was – this was their only way out of whatever situation they were in. Like they either ha had to go to school. This was the only way they were going to get to go to school or they were in a bad situation yeah. at home and they had to get out of it. So they joined the, the army or they came from a fifth generation army family and they had to join. But everyone's yeah. 
the story was something along those those lines you know i mean it's hard it's hard to listen to but it's like you know yeah yeah where they didn't have a job and this was the only job ago yeah Totally. Well, I'm sure that it was it was great for you to be there and you know lighten things up and yeah. make them feel good. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, okay, another one that I really I have to go into this too because I love it. The Wonder Woman sketch. <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? How did you come up with that? I, <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. So I'm a it bit of a silly. dancer. You know, I I do <laughs> dance. I had dance training as a kid when I was acting. I did a lot of dance training and. I'm a bit of a natural dancer. So when I first was starting to do stand up, I was in my friend's apartment and the Josie and the Pussycats theme song came on. I don't know if you remember the cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a great song. And I was just rocking and dancing around my friend's apartment. And it was pretty funny, I guess. And he's like, you should do that on stage. You should do what you just did on stage. I was like, that's so stupid. There's no, there's no context for it. It's so dumb. He's like, just do it. Trust me. So I do the Josie and the Pussycats thing, and it kind of went over pretty, pretty well. But it didn't have a costume or anything. And then I was, and then I also realized the window of people who know that song is very small. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? So <laughs> I, I found this other TV show theme song disc, and I was like, what other song should we do? And I found the Wonder Woman theme song from the 70s television show. It's a great song. Bow, 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 wonder, wonder. <laughs> great bass line, like it's really funky. So I was like, oh, I could do a dance to this. And then all of a sudden, someone gave me a Wonder Woman outfit. So I was like, okay, not only do I have a dance and a great song, and I have an outfit. So it Let's just came from like, yes, let's make this work. So yeah. it just came you from You look like, great in it. <laughs> yeah, right? Thank you. It's a, it's a small, which is part of the joke. The yeah. joke is that it's, it's, a, pretty it's small. a small. It's not supposed to fit. That's part of the joke. So, it was pretty. It was pretty compact. <laughs> oh, it's compact. It's stuffed in a lot. There's a lot getting stuffed in little corners of that outfit. It's spent. So, uh, so anyway, so that's really what it just was. The origins was just like, I, my friends thought dancing me to dancing to TV show theme songs was funny, and that's really it. And then I found one that yeah. good that worked that people knew, and even if they didn't know the song, the visual was funny enough because of the 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 outfit, so that I kept it. I kept doing it and I did it yeah, I still do you it did here it. and there I still bust it out when I need it when someone orders it someone will be like hey come do the show and you have to do the one room bit so I'll, I'll throw it out. I'll you know it's sitting in my drawer perfect nice you're gonna put it on <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> on pack up um no it's great and it's spontaneous and fun I love it yeah, and, I've been, and I did it on tour with Jimmy we did a little tour comedy tour with, with Nate Bargatze and Julie McCullough, Nick Thune. And when I did it on tour, and then it was a big hit. And then when Gal Gadot came on The Tonight Show, Jimmy was like, we're going to surprise her with you. Yeah, I just watched that right before yeah. you talked we to you. Yes. She didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> we just knew she was going to She looks a little bit better in it than you did, but that was good. Well, it's, it works safe differently. Yes. <laughs> so she, um, uh, anyway, so it was funny, and she, she was a good sport about it. Yeah, she definitely was. Yeah. So do you like doing more of like the stand-up comedy? Because you, you've done ton, tons of TV series. I I've mean, there's a TV long stuff. list of everything. Yeah, yeah, do not you, that long. Not long, not, it should be longer, but... Um, well, I've you done, have a lot of different things that you've done. Yeah, for sure. I've done so much of TV. I, um, you know, it's, it's hard to replace doing something live. Like doing something live in front of a great crowd and really get into the groove, like there's really nothing better than that. It's really great. Yeah. But doing stuff on TV that's really fun, that works, that like goes out to millions of people and everyone enjoys it, has its own rewards, you know? Yeah. You know, okay. uh, I don't know. Those, those other shows I did on, on, National, on Nat Geo, National Geographic Channel, those were a bit of a lark that I got asked to host these two science comedy hybrid shows. Because Nat Geo right. was experimenting with like science and comedy to see if that would be a thing. So I hosted their, their two attempts at that. One was called Duck Wax Don't Echo with Michael Ian Black and Tom Popper were the other two hosts. And the science is stupid. stupid right. Right. Um, those were interesting shows. They were, and they were fun to do. I mean, it was, you know, I got paid a fair amount and, and it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun. 
Yeah. Um, and it was interesting to see how that process happened. You know, each show had its own process because because Duck Quest and Echo had a live audience and a ton of writers and producers, and there was you know two other hosts. While Science is Stupid was like me in front of a green screen with ah. one, one writer director, one one writer, and like a sh- small crew, like one camera guy, one sound guy. That was it. It was very different. How long does it take to finish like Science is Stupid or you know? Of, we like, did like that. Science of Stupid. We did fourteen episodes in six days. Ooh, wow! Very okay. true. We crammed in a lot of episodes in a short amount of time because the truth is, it was just me in front of a green screen, like just me okay. talking, being funny, explaining, setting up clips, making fun of clips. So it was just a faster, as fast as I could talk and get the clip, the the take right, the faster we could right. move on to the next show. So we yeah. did about two episodes a day. But that's kind of, I mean, in a way, that's a lot of work, but it's kind of nice just to blaze through it, right? Rather yeah, than drag you. Right. Yeah. Especially because we were shooting in LA. Yeah. We were in LA, and I live here in New York. So right. we were doing the Tonight Show had just started. It just, we were shooting this right when the Tonight Show started. So I, I was flying out on the weekends, shooting mm-hmm. in LA Saturday, Sunday, all day, then flying back Sunday night and doing the Tonight Show all week, then flying back to LA Saturday, Sunday, coming back to New York all week. That's so a lot. That, that, I, <laughs> that, I used to do the back and forth to LA and New York, and it's, you know, it, can get, it can get old, but yeah. It can get old. I, mean, I did it for three weeks, so, so it was fine, but uh, it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so your wife, and am I, am I saying her name right? Heatha? Heatha, Heitha? exactly right. Yeah. No, Heitha, you got it. Yeah, I, yeah, right. I nailed it. Okay, she's very, she has a very impressive resume and I love the things she does. Do you guys yep. work together and do you have any projects in the works? Um, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, I enjoy what she does and she works with me a little bit. We should help each other out as much as we can. Yeah, of we course. We have nothing right now that we're doing together. We have, we discuss it a lot. Okay. That to be put together, but we have nothing right now that we're that's that's happening. But we have a lot of ideas of things that could happen for us together. Sometimes that yeah. works, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> one thing, but, right, right. One thing we did do was she was trying to get me in shape, so she would take me exercising every day, <laughs> and she would put it on her stories, her her Instagram stories, and people started really responding to my agony. Because I was, ah. I was very open about my pain. I was very open about how much I hated it and how much I hated the, the cycling class or the five-mile run or whatever it was that we were doing. Right. I was like, this is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. I hate this so much. And that was the video every single day. And people really started Perfect. to relate to it and, 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 and uh, dig it. So we thought maybe something with that could be funny. Um, yeah, so, cool. Yeah. So what, what's in the future for you? Are you, do you loving what you're doing now? Do you have any idea, any projects behind? I got, yeah, you I'm not looking home. I'm not going to the show. We have no audience. I'm not going to tonight's show. Yeah. Sure. So I'm writing two scripts that I'm working on uh, for TV shows. And I'm going to turn that, um, my live Instagram shows into a podcast. I might just rip that Ooh. audio or maybe re-interview some people. So I've done like- nice six shows already and each show I interview two people for like an hour so that's you know I don't know 50 hours of material already um you already have it I already got it so it's just it's just all has to be edited anyway so that's the thing that's coming up I have a new website I think it's thesethherzog.com um is up which is new I have someone to like um aggregate a lot of my material and old videos of old commercials I did and old stand-up videos and some stuff like that. A lot of like Tonight Show clips and podcasts and articles I've written. And so it's an nice. aggregate of a lot of stuff I've done. So that's, and that's where now. people can find you and the, they can find you on social media. Yeah. Do you do much social media? You can find me on social media for sure. In, Instagram okay. I'm very active with. So Seth Zog at, on, on Instagram and the Zog on Twitter. Um, I'm, I mean, now that I'm home, I'm, Pretty active-ish. I'm active-ish. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> active-ish. <laughs> I'm active. Different kind I'm of active. active. Yeah. 
I'm an. <laughs> I have to tell you, I, I watched um, I watched Jimmy and his wife on one of the episodes. Not sure they were they were stro- I think they were in the strollers. They had the girls in there, and they were talking about their fertility struggles. And I can How's totally that? relate to that. And I, I thought it was such a meaningful, just talking real about what's happening and how happy they were, you know, now at this point, what they've been through. And I really, I really tuned into that. So they like, were really, once the kids were born, and I think it was so public that they, that all of a sudden they had babies and it was fairly public that like Nancy was never pregnant, you know? Yeah. So they had to, they had to come public about like, we had a surrogate and they did a right. whole Tonight Show interview. I mean, I mean today's show interview. They did a People Magazine article about it. So, you know, it was their way of like taking the tabooness out of it. There's a lot of tabooness in fertility struggles. Not only fertility struggles, but like miscarriages, how common that is. And I know from, you know, our experiences and other people's experiences that like it's so common, but never discussed. It's not. And I, I think it's, I really think that was a very important episode that he did there because I think a lot of women are afraid to talk about it. And so many women are going through it and it's okay to have a surrogate and it's okay to have these fertility problems and you can have a happy ending. And I was really touched by it. I feel like there's almost no one who doesn't have some kind of struggle. Yeah. Everyone has something, something, some sort of bump in the road or hiccup. It's very rare that you don't, you know, and some people's struggles are longer than, than others. Like I know Jimmy and Nancy, I think they talked about how they were trying for many, many years, you know, before they, yeah, ended up with that they did it was great i really enjoyed it i actually think it was right down the street from me <laughs> are you, are you, we live in the same neighborhood yeah <laughs> sagaponic yeah nice <laughs> well cool what's up thank you so much for coming on anytime. and like i said anytime i had a great talk with you and um i love watching you i can't wait to see what you're gonna do in the future thank you, and, thank um, you. I'll let you know first yeah, I'd love to have you back on. And I hope that we can just get back to having our vibrant city and back I to know, life. I hope, yes, I hope we can get back to life. And I hope you guys can come to the show again soon. Oh, we will. We'll be yeah. there for sure. In fact, I cannot wait. I literally cannot wait for the first day we can get back into the studio. I'm so, and I hope it's sooner than September, but I don't know if it will be. You know? Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a fun moment. Yeah, yeah. All right, you have an awesome summer. It was you so too. good to talk to you. you too, okay. All right, ciao. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I had such a great show. Um, It was really incredible to be able to have um, Seth on today, um, stopping in and talking to us about his career, life, and what's happening in New York City right now with everything. Um, It's just we're all waiting for the fall to come and hopefully have some normalcy back. But it was really good for him to stop in. We had a great show. Remember to follow me at Amy Hart Live on Instagram, YouTube, and iTunes. And please go to my channel and subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know what you think, what's going on out there, and we'll be talking real soon. Hope you guys have a great day and a beautiful week. A Parkville Media Production.